All right, I'm gonna show you all how I start uh, scanning pages for publishers like uh, Marvel Comics and DC Comics. Uh, we'll usually use a larger 11 by 17 scanner. Doesn't matter what brand of scanner, as long as you scan this way, the artwork will be in high resolution and then you can send it to the publishers. Uh, so I'm using Photoshop and it doesn't matter which versions of Photoshop that you're using, these are the steps. So I'm gonna show you guys how I go through the process and each step along the way. So the first thing, I, well, before I do that, uh, let me tell you a little bit about me. My name is Walden Wong, comic book artist from Marvel DC. And uh, check out my website, waldenwongart.com. And hopefully you enjoy these videos and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. Uh, hit the subscribe button and like the video and share with your friends. Uh, without further ado, here we go. So the first thing you do with Photoshop is to go to File. Make sure your scanner is turned on and you have your artwork on your 11 by 17 scanner. If you have a smaller scanner that scans only 8.5 by 11, um, I add a link like right, right up here somewhere that you can uh, watch and how you stitch artwork together. But for this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to scan individual interior pages, uh, just 11 by 17 pages. So we go to, uh, we're gonna go to image, actually we go to file, import, and then WIA support. And then you click start. Okay, don't none of these things you don't really need to worry about these. Click start. And then if you have multiple scanners or printers connected, uh, it's gonna show up here. So just pick the one that you would like to use. Uh, in my case, I just have this one selected. I'll click OK. And you have the options. What do you want to scan? It'll say color pictures, grayscale, black and white, or custom. Usually for comic book work, you want the highest resolution. So what I usually do is I'll click custom. And after you click custom, I'll click on the bottom to adjust it. Leave the brightness and contrast alone. For the picture type, make sure you have color picture. Your options are grayscale, black and white. Uh, most people would think I'm just going to scan in grayscale or in black and white because the comic book work is black and white. But I'm here to tell you that if you scan in full color first, you're going to get much more better resolution than if you scan in grayscale and black and white. And for your resolution, just put it on 600. 600 is a good scan, but I'm also gonna talk about how we can reduce that size for sending it a little bit later. So once you have that, click OK. And then here, you can choose the size of your bed uh, scan. Um, usually, I'll just have it at the largest size, and then later after I'm done scanning, let me click Scan first. After I'm done scanning, I'll just go and crop it into the size. So after you click scan, uh, just wait for the image to process. It only, it only takes like a few seconds to scan this. If you're scanning in bitmap, of course, it's going to be faster. If you're scanning grayscale, again, that's a little bit faster. Uh, but full color, it takes a little bit. The higher the resolution, the slower your scanner scans, and that is normal. Uh, if you're pressing scan and all of a sudden you see your scanner going really quick, that, that means you have it at the wrong resolution. So. Again, this is for pages that I scan for Marvel Comics when I'm done working on 11 by 17 original artwork, as well as DC Comics. And you can also use the same process when you're sending to other publishers like Indie Comics or Dark Horse Comics or Image Comics. All the process is the same. I'll explain the crop area. I'll explain the percentage of uh, saving, uh, what type of file in this uh, image. So I'm gonna let this scan all the way across Actually, let me, actually, to speed up this video, I'm just going to cancel this and then just have the scan pop up. Okay, now you have the 11 by 17 artwork scan from your Bristol board to the computer. Uh, we're going to rotate this artwork around. doesn't matter if you scan it upside down or right side up. I'm going to teach you how to scan it and then also adjust it if it's kind of like not aligned perfectly. So what the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to image, rotate, image rotation and then flip this 180 degrees. That's if you have it upside down. And then we're gonna take that a step further in case this was not scanned at a perfectly vertical. There's a blue line there that shows that the board was uh, perfectly uh, horizontal going that direction. I will use my ruler tool, I click the ruler tool. And then anywhere here, I'll select this point and I'll drag that to anywhere on the line and I make sure it's parallel to that blue line. Okay, right there. And then here, next step I'll go to, go to is image, image rotation, and then now I'm going to do arbitrary. After I click arbitrary, Photoshop calculates how many percent that is off. So it, this tells me that the artwork needs to be rotated counterclockwise 0.10%. So I'll click OK, 
it's going to rotate it until it's perfectly uh, into the right size. Okay, so right here, I click Control Zero, so I can see the whole image. Now, what I want to do is remove these blue lines. Also, the like the credits up here, I want to remove that. So there's a lot of YouTube videos out there that shows you like different ways and different techniques to remove it. I'm going to show you my way, which is very easy, effective, and simple, okay? Um, I've been doing this for comic book publishers such as Marvel Comics and DC Comics for a long time, and this is this is totally how I do it. Okay, I'll use a magic wand, which is the quick key letter W, and then on the tolerance, I would just type in maybe 45 or something, okay? You can type in 100, you can type in whatever number, I'll just type in 45. Click the contiguous, make sure that one's off. Contiguous means if you select uh, with a magic wand, you're selecting that one item, it's only gonna select that one letter here. Uh, what you want to do is remove the contiguous, that way, when you click the letter M, it clicks everything that's the same color, okay? Photoshop will find all the areas that has that same color, and then now, your next step is to press delete. So when I press delete, we're gonna see these letters and these lines over here disappear. So on your keyboard, press delete. Once you press delete, it's gonna come up with a fill bar, and then you choose either black, gray, white, contour oil pattern, or whatever all those things are. What I usually do is I just click white, and then I'll click okay. Once I click okay, all those blue lines that were there is gone. Okay, right here, a little bit is gone. There's a little bit of residue because it's a slight different color. So I'll use my magic wand again, and then I'll click on, I'll zoom in closer, I'll click on to a blue area. So let's click onto this blue, and then it will find everything that's that, that's that blue, and then I'll press delete. So same thing, delete, press okay. And then now we have the artwork that doesn't have all those blues that was on top, you see it's gone. Okay, and then here, the blue line printed stuff that I have here is a different blue value. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my magic wand again. I'll click on to this blue. It will select everything that's the same color. And again, press the delete button on your keyboard. Make sure it's on white and then click OK. Now all that blue is gone. Very simple, very easy. Now that you have all that removed, what we want to do is remove, change this file from the color file into a grayscale file. And to do that, we're gonna to go to image, mode, and then from RGB, we're gonna select grayscale. Once you select the grayscale, now this is a grayscale image. Okay, from the grayscale image, what we want to do next is to make some of these grays look black. We want comic book art to be black and white. So we're gonna to go to image, adjustment, levels, and once you're on here, and then I'm gonna demonstrate here, this middle bar, this little triangle here, when you toggle left and right, it will make the blacks nice and rich. So usually I'll go towards the right, and this will make that darker, okay? Now, if you have a little bit of pencil in there or a little bit of blue line, which will, when you want to remove it, instead of using eraser and you're scrubbing it, you just click this right triangle and then just toggle it to the left a little bit. So now, you have a artwork that you scan and it's perfectly black and white. You can zoom in to see if there's any uh, gray areas. So if there's any gray areas, just adjust it. So right here, I see a little bit of grays over here. So I'm gonna take it a step further and I'll use my burn tool. Burn tool is this one right here, the burn tool, which is the letter O. So I have my burn tool selected. You can adjust the size of your burn tool by pressing the begin bracket or the end bracket. Okay, you don't want it to be too big, otherwise you'll be burning other areas that you don't want. I'll just adjust it to this size. And then here, I'll just click my mouse, and then like almost like you're using eraser, you're erasing that area, and you're making it darker, okay? So I'll go in there, and I'll look at any areas that's a little bit of grayish, and if I want to darken it up, I can darken it up. So all these look pretty good over here, looks pretty good here, here, yeah, looks, everyone else looks pretty good. Uh, maybe here, I'll just do a little bit of burning here, just darken it up a little bit. And let's see up here. Okay, so everything looks pretty good over here. So now that I have that, I press Control Zero to make sure everything fits on the screen. And then now we have for the 11 by 17 scan, we need to reduce it to comic book size. So to reduce it to comic book size, we go to Image, Image Size, and then right here, you can have it at 100%. You, what we want to do is type in 
that is the reduction of comic book size from a larger 11 by 17 artwork keep the resolution at 600 for now but reduce it to 67 percent just make sure both the width and height is the same you click ok you'll see this image reduce once that image is reduced i'm gonna make this fit to screen so you can see better i just press Control zero to fit to screen now i'm going to use my marque tool which is this rectangle over here and instead of it being on normal when you have it on normal you're just selecting random sizes what i'll do is i'll click the style as a fixed size okay when you have a fixed size photoshop will remember whatever num number you type over here on the width and whatever number you type here on the height from previous uses of uh, usage of photoshop so for the width I have that set as 6.875 right over here. So if you don't have it, I'll just type in 6.875 inches. Type in IN. And then for the height, I have that set as 10.438 inches. Okay. Once you have that, okay, anytime you click on anywhere with the fixed size selected from a previous setting, this will find that bounding box that's exactly to comic book size. You can move your mouse to select where you want, or you can go use your cursor keys on your keyboard and then just nudge it around. And another thing I like to do is when I'm doing comic book art, usually I'll ink further than the bleed line. Like for example, the outside of the bleed line, I'll just ink further along on the outside. And then this way, I don't have to crop in all of a sudden, uh, there's not enough black here and I have to digital, uh, Black that out or do some post production work on Photoshop and just uh, fix some of those artwork or clone some of the artwork. So I have the bounding box and make sure that all four sides are nicely inside the artwork. And then now I have that, I'll just click on I'll just click on image, crop. So now this is a perfect comic book size. Okay, we have this image at 600 uh, DPI. We really don't need that much of a resolution when we're doing comic book production or any kind of printing. We're going to image image size and we're going to reduce this resolution from 600 to 400 pixels per inch okay 400 pixels per inch will work for marvel comics dc comics dark horse image any independent comic book publishers you're working for or if you're going to self-publish you can also do the same these are the same measurements from beginning to end also crop sizes um, adjusting and all that fun stuff click ok and now this is a high resolution image that's good enough for coloring, for printing, for making comics. So when you're saving it, how do you save it? What format do you save it? So I'm going to show you. Go to File, Save As. And then from here, you're going to type in, let's type in Cover Art. Okay? Cover Art, High Resolution. Okay? And then Types is, you want to make sure you click the TIFF. Okay, there's all these other choices, Photoshop, JPEG, uh, PNG, all that. You don't need any of those. For high resolution, for comic book work, uh, just click TIFF and then click Save. And then all this stuff, uh, don't worry about it. It uh, doesn't make a difference. If you're not compressing, you compress it later. Just click OK. And then now you have a high resolution image that you can upload to your client's FTP, uh, email them, and then they can use that for coloring, lettering, or whatnot. Now, I took it a step further. I worked with a uh, lot of comic book publishers, and instead of flooding their emails with a high resolution image, uh, I'll just send this to their file transfer protocol or their uh, file sharing client or whatever, the high resolution. And then I'll make a smaller resolution to send to the editor. So when they get it, it doesn't flood up their email or take up a lot of space and it will be easier for them to download the image. So here, the next step I go is image, image size. And from the 400 resolution that I originally had, I just type in 160. Okay, I click 160, I click OK. This makes it smaller. However, all the Details will still be there when you're looking at it in their emails. Okay, and then I'll save it as file Save as Right here. We're going to call this cover art to email mail Clients and instead of saving as TIFF what you want to do is save it as a JPEG Okay, save it as a JPEG and then save and then right here, I always have this at the highest quality, and I'll click OK. Now, here's the thing. 
not only can you use this for email, you can save this for later. And when the book is published, you can also post this on social media. You can also use this lower resolution 160 JPEG to post on your website and Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever uh, social media you like to use. You can use that for posting as well as emailing to editors. So I hope you enjoy this video and you learn something from it. Um, if you enjoy videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that uh, like button and hit that notification bell. So anytime I upload a video, you'll be one of the first to see it. Um, to check out some of my work is waldenwallart.com. Uh, check out my website and I also have a Patreon page. So if you like to show support of me making these videos for you, check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash waldenwallart. So until next time, I hope you learned how to scan stuff and have a fun day. Take care. Bye-bye.